Good afternoon, everyone. This is Eric Hill, Senior Vice President of Corporate Operations for the Enterprise Wireless Alliance. I'm here with Cecilia Hayes, Executive Director of the Spectrum Solutions Group at the Enterprise Wireless Alliance. We'd like to introduce you to SIBO, and we'd like to talk to you about all of the features that we have uh, put together in a package that we anticipate you and your colleagues will be wanting to use uh, for many, many years to come so that you can submit your requirements for frequency coordination and other spectrum solutions to EWA uh, for our certification and forwarding onward to the FCC. Uh, what I'd like to cover now is our agenda and let you know that essentially uh, CBO has been set up so that you can submit both uh, applications for public safety and for business industrial through one single portal uh, for which you can access from any computer, any smartphone, any tablet, any time, any day. There is no software to download, um, and you'll see uh, as we go through our material today, uh, uh, the website is the same as EWA's, uh, enterprisewireless.org, uh, for all of your licensing needs. We think it's pretty intuitive and pretty user-friendly, and we'll let you be the judge of that uh, upon conclusion of this webinar when you see uh, the slides that we're going to be going through. It is wizard-based, uh, so we think a lot of our members will appreciate the fact that you can, uh, as opposed to uh, the Form 601, where most of you submit your material to EWA that essentially starts at Field 1 and goes all the way through to the end, we'd like to uh, introduce you to a wizard that essentially will be asking for less information than you would normally provide through the direct form entry because a lot of this information can be uh, predetermined uh, and populated in advance, particularly when you create an account uh, through SIBO. Uh, there's several options uh, at the conclusion of you dropping off your data for EWA that you may enjoy, one of which is just essentially handing it over to EWA at any point during your data entry. Uh, you can uh, use a feature that we call SIBO Express, where you provide as much information as you have, and at the conclusion, you click a button and say, please finish it off for me. There is an option you'll also see towards the end called SIBO Solo, where you're the solo artist providing uh, all the data that's necessary for us to do our certification and, if applicable, transmitting to the FCC. So you've essentially provided all the necessary data. Uh, and then the third option is called SIBO Pro where not only have you provided the data and all the necessary data for us to do our work uh, from a coordination and certification standpoint, but you actually will be able to take a look at uh, the incumbent uh, landscape, if you will, uh, and take a look at options that uh, no other uh, individuals have had in the past with regard to EWA's uh, special toolbox that will allow you to see uh, incumbents and take a look at some of the market conditions that only you uh, mostly know best so that you can then select frequencies, submit those for EWA to certify, uh, for which you're then on your way to being a SIBO Pro. And as always, EWA staff, uh, Cecilia, my, uh, our speaker today, and all of the other dozen uh, Spectrum Advisors at EWA, they are always available for uh, your questions, either by telephone, by email, or through our uh, contact us forms that we'll get into as we go forward. So let us proceed. and. Uh, Essentially, uh, when you go to enterprisewireless.org today, you'll see a new website for EWA, and just about everything orange on this new site is a capability that uh, you have not had before, uh, which we'd love for you to try out uh, and uh, sign in. You've received, uh, most of you have received an email invitation from EWA as our most special customers uh, to uh, go ahead and uh, provide a password. We've already pre-populated your account details. All you'll need to do is click the link uh, change your password, totally confidential to you, and you're on your way. If you didn't receive a special email and you're joining today's call at the suggestion of somebody else, all you'll need to do is go to the home page and click login. Chances are we are, have already set up an account for you too. If you are a member of EWA and you've done any coordination work with us in the past, click the login link and click uh, forgot password. Uh, and Give us your email address, the one that we use to correspond with you regularly, and um, you'll be on your way there. And if uh, we haven't got you set up in our account because we haven't dealt with you in the past, by all means, click register, set up an account, and you'll be on your way. So please do so. Let us know what you think. We'll address uh, a little bit of the uh, account creation process at the end of today's webinar. But the lion's share of what we wanted to present for you today is how does SIVA work? How do you get your data in? 
how do you track it yourselves through our dashboard, and uh, to introduce to you some of the cool tools that we have made available all in one place so that you don't have to go bouncing around to different websites to pull that in. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Cecilia Hayes. Cecilia, thank you. Thank you, Eric. And I'm going to jump right in, and we're going to start looking at what's in the SIBO tools. In the SIBO tools, that is going to be your one-stop shop where you can gather all of your information in order to complete a 601. We have seven different tools that you can look at. We've got the ULS call sign search, um, Max ERP, MAPIT, HAAT. You can do a frequency availability query. You can do ground elevation, and you can also do a conversion. So when you enter a call sign, if you want to see what's in the FCC's ULS, you can do it by three different steps. You can enter the call sign, the FRN, or the licensee name, and do a search. Once you do the search, it will come back with the call sign. It will show you the licensee name, their FRN, their radio service code, their status if they're active or not, their expiration date, and details. So if you wanted to see details with regards to the call sign, you could click on the detail button and it would show you the licensing name, the construction build out, the location information. And if that information isn't sufficient, we do and are linked to the FCC's website where you could click directly on the call sign and it would take you out to the FCC's website so you could view the data there. The next is the max ERP tool. The FCC does require us to submit all of our data by using degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I would enter it by using degrees, minutes, and seconds, but you do see that we have other options here. You can do it in decimal format. You can enter a city, state, zip, and gather the data. And it, you will put in the coordinates. You'll put in the band that you want to search. You'll enter the HAAT and the system will calculate the ERP for you and populate it at the bottom of the screen. The next is map it. If you don't know what the coordinates for the location that you're looking for, I would recommend that we do it by entering a current location. A current location, the map will change. It will give you the coordinates that you're looking for and you can go ahead and write it down in decimal format and our system will convert it over into degrees, minutes, and seconds for you. The HAAT is another function that we have. Again, you'd enter the latitude and longitude. You'd put in the antenna height, the ground elevation, and it will calculate the HAAT for you and it's based on every uh, 45 degrees, eight radials as the FCC currently um, request that we do that. Next, this is a frequency availability search. This allows you, if you are at a customer's uh, place of business and they were told no spectrum is available, you could go in and do a query on your mobile phone and it would automatically default. You can pick a VHF, UHF, industrial public safety, but we've got it defaulted to 15 meters for the antenna and 50 watts ERP. Since this is just a preliminary, it is not an actual frequency coordination analysis. This just tells you possible candidate frequencies. So you could go in and you could go ahead and submit it to EWA saying, hey, look, I'd like you to coordinate something for me. We will get notification and we will complete the process for you. Seal, I just wanted to mention uh, as well in the lower left corner of this slide, you'll see that we've got this application, two applications or, or in two app stores, the frequency availability query uh, for download. So if you've got a smartphone and you want to go straight to this frequency availability query tool, uh, you can download that, submit your requirements to EWA if you're sitting, after sitting with your customer and you know what you want submit your uh, request to EWA and we can further populate uh, an application to get it on the way for you. Uh, you'll see additional tools available in our mobile app as we go forward, but at the moment, uh, this one is, uh, is top of the list. Thanks, Eric. Next is elevation. Again, I would put this in in degrees, minutes, and seconds because that's what the FCC uses. You can 
go ahead and put in the coordinates and ask it to get your elevation and it will populate for you. Next is the conversion tool. This will convert feet to meters, meters to feet, miles to kilometers, and kilometers to miles for you. And these are the tools that you will need in order to enter the application into SIBO and be able to coordinate the application should you wish to do so yourself. Next, this is what your dashboard will look, at, look like. So you can see your orders, your services, you can edit your profile from here. You can generate an application where you can see where it says start new application. So you would click on the FCC license application. You can create an FRN. You can do basic license review. In here right now, you'll see that we do have some applications in here. We're showing you the log number. If, it was a, if there was a call sign affiliated with it, it has a file number. It's telling you the application name or the location who your analyst is, what the status is. So you'll have work in progress, you'll have your coordinations, you can have a bucket that says hand it over to EWA as well. Oh. Okay, next, again, as I said, your work in progress, your coordinations and hand it over to EWA and you'll be able to track the status of your applications. Within my services, we do have where you can go in and search. If you can't recall the app ID, you can put in the name, you can put in the last four digits uh, of the uh, application ID, anything that can pertain to that where you can go in and search for your data. And just hit the apply button and continue on. Now, there are a couple ways to get an application to EWA. The wizard has a lot of bells and whistles. It has a lot of edit checks in there. You would click the wizard for a new application. The direct entry form are for your mods, your amendments, your renewals, NTs, and anything else. We do have a template form entry now where you could create a template that you would use uh, for your mobile only systems if they were five frequencies, 100 units, same emission designators, powers, and ERPs, you could create a template and just store that and pull that up and create an application from that. Moving right into it, here is the application that we are going to generate. We're going to, you'll notice on your right hand side there are several steps. The yellow triangles are warning signs and those warning signs are telling you that information is needed in order to move forward within the application. The red box means that it is a required field and you must answer this in order for us to submit it to the FCC. Now, we can do an FRN search. If the licensee currently has a call sign that is valid within the FCC, we can go in and do a search of their FRN and you can do it by either the FRN, the company name, or the individual name, and it will populate it for us. In this particular case, the company that we were looking for didn't hold a current license, so it said no records found. So you would have to go in and say, I don't believe I have one at this time, but I'll file for the FRN on my own, and you can still move forward within the application. Next is it's asking for the FRN, the entity type. So this is basically uh, entity type information that is required for FCC. So if it is a corporation, you would start with the legal entity name, your attention to, your PO box or street address, your zip code, your phone numbers. We all know that the FCC is going green, so they do and within the docket told us that you must start providing the licensee um, email address. More information with regards to the applicant. It's asking for the applicant's name, middle name, last name, and then you go to your contact. Once you create your profile, this will automatically be stored and it will populate each and every application that you enter into SIBO. 
This is just general information. It's asking if it's for government, not governmental, developmental, STA. You would answer not applicable if it's not either of those or a demonstration license. You will notice that we do already have some of the boxes pre-populated. If they are exempt from fees, and it's populated to know, should they be exempt from fees, you'll need to go in and change that to a yes. But we try to minimize the amount of typing that you have to do within a screen. Basic qualifications. Are they alien ownership? Are they, uh, have they been convicted of a felony? If any of these answers should be changed to yes, you'll need to answer them yes, and then if attachments are required, there will be a box that will drop down and say that attachment is required. And you can either have EWA do that for you or you can go ahead and put it within the application. Okay, here's where it gets real interesting and lots of fun. So if you have an associated call sign, you would want to hit add associated call sign. This will tell us that there are multiple call signs out there that are affiliated with the application that you're currently working on. So you would hit add call sign. Control point the same thing. FCC does require us to provide um, control point addresses, whether it's a mobile only or a fixed site. If something should happen to the system, who is the FCC going to contact? So you would add, want to add a control point. So you'd click add a control point and then you would immediately click on street address and you could begin typing in and filling in the box with the city, the county, the state. And you can tab through all of these fields or you can use your mouse, whichever you're more comfortable with. Then we're going to go in and we're going to start adding our Schedule D and H. We're going to add our location data and our frequencies in order for us to do our prep, to do our searches and frequency coordination. So when you get to locations, you want to add a location. When you add the location, it will populate to the next, let's go to the next screen. We're going to do a fixed site. So we're telling it that it's fixed. This will direct us if it requires an ASR or if you want to check Tau Air, you can click on those blue boxes that says search Tau Air or search for an ASR and that's linked directly to the FCC's website and you can determine whether or not you pass Tau Air or if a registration is required and then you can go look to see if something's already registered. And if they are registered, you would put in the ASR number within the box and our system will pre-populate that information for you so you wouldn't have to key it all in. The only thing that I ask is that you verify that we have the most current information for your ASR. Okay, so now we're putting in the coordinates. We're doing it in degrees, minutes, and seconds. As I said, the FCC requires degrees, minutes, and seconds. But if you notice to the right, there's a little box that says Inter Latin Launch in decimal format. So if you've got it in decimal format, you can click that and it will let you put the decimal in and it will convert it over for you to degrees, minutes, and seconds. You are required on a fixed site to put in the location description, the city, the county, the state, the ground elevation, the overall height of the structure with and without appurtenances, and the type of the structure. You will be required to answer if it's going to have environmental impact. We have selected and put no in this box. As I said, we've defaulted a lot of, but if it's going to cause problems for the EPA, then you need to change that and say yes. Next would be your mobile only. So we're going to add the mobile only information. So you're going to pick M for mobile and it will pre-populate for you. We know that this is going to operate around the fixed site that we just created that we entered the data for. And then it's going to ask us, well, what location number do you want this to operate around? So here we pick location four and we said that the radius was going to be 80 kilometers. 
with an 80 kilometer radius, we know that we're not compliant with the FCC's safe harbor table because for VHF it's only 40 and UHF it's 32. So in this particular case, you would have to provide a justification statement and a contour as to why you need more than what the FCC allows. Next, it's asking, are you north of line A, west of line C? Is it going to have a significant environmental effect? Again, we've pre-populated. If Canada is yes, you would change that to a yes. Okay, now that we've added all of our locations, we need to go in and we need to add the antenna information. And again, there's the yellow triangle that's telling us that information is required in order for us to complete the application. So once you pick antennas, you would click on add the antenna information. Again, you'll see the yellow triangles. It's asking us if it's omni, what the HAAT is, and what the antenna height is. So since this is a fixed site, this information would be required in order for us to complete the application. On frequencies, this is where I get real excited because it's a nice tool now. You can go in and add your frequencies. You can go in and where it says frequency band optional, you can put in VHF, you can put in the letter V, you can put in the letter U, and it will automatically put in the low and the high side of the frequencies for you. It will give you the range. If you want to look at a specific frequency, then you would only list the frequency on the low side. You need to tell the system how many frequencies are you looking for. So if you put in the range and you needed five frequencies, I would say the number of frequencies being requested would be five. If you wanted talk around, you would double that so that the system would go pick up the low side as well as the high side and give you the pair. Again, the station class codes, we do have a drop down box. It tells you FB2, FB4, FB6, FB8, MO, all of the types of station classes are there for, me, for you to pick. The number of units, what's their output power, what's your ERP. Then your emissions. On your emissions, it, you, once you enter it, it will have a select button. But what I want to do is I want to show you the multi-row. So I would intentionally leave, I would enter my data, leave the emission designator blank if I had multiple lines for um, emission designators. And then I would click the multi-row. The multi-row box, up one more, Eric. The multi-row box there would automatically check every line below that I've entered and it would add the emission designator for me. And then I would have to click on number three where it says multi-row emission designator where it's in blue. And then once I've entered all my data, I could click check the safe harbor table. I want to see if I'm compliant with SEC rules and regulations. Okay, so once we do the data entry and we've went and clicked on the multi-row, it will bring us to the emission designator screen. On this screen, you have a box that says add emission designators. You, it will give you a drop-down. You can pick whether it's analog, digital, voice, data, eight, seven, four, Whatever emission designators you need, you just keep hitting add emission designator and it will keep populating that until you complete the process. Once you complete the process, you want to save and close the emission designator. And then this is what your final product will look like. We entered a fixed site with associated mobiles. We said that it was 25 watts out, 25 watts ERP for the mobiles and then it populated the emission designators that we have selected. 
based on what we put in under the FRN, it's determined that it's for private internal use and mobile, and that it is not interconnected based on our station class. Not too fast, probably. Then we have the major minor question is for modifications, your 470 to 512 and above. Otherwise, you notice it's not in a red box, therefore not required. So you'd have to do CMRS 470 to 512 and above. The rule section, we have it defaulted to 90.35A, but there are four types. There's A1, which is just general use, A2 or for your school, A3 or for your churches and your clergy, and four is for your hospitals. So you don't have to answer that, one, two, three, or four. You can leave it 90.35A, and we would accept that. Then this is the certification statement is the customer's signature name, not you as the contact. And if you notice the steps on the right now, once you have that little checkbox, that means you've answered everything completely and it's accurate and there's no warning sign saying additional information is required. And you've answered everything in red. So your application should be good. The next screen basically gives the coordinator or the spectrum advisor analyst the information that you want to provide to them with regards to this application. You want to give them some special instructions saying, hey, look, I need to monitor these frequencies before you coordinate it. I need 250 kilohertz separation between the transmit uh, frequencies. Or if it's VHF, I need like a 4.5 to 6 megahertz separation between transmit and receive. Whatever is important to you with regards to this application that the coordinator needs to know in order to get it processed out for you completely and accurately with your wants and your desires, you need to tell us. So you, this is where you would put that information with regards to that. Again, earlier I mentioned if there were attachments, you could have EWA to fill them out on your behalf. You would change that no to a yes. EWA could add the file, or you can go ahead and add the file yourself, and you would select your attachment type. So if it was a waiver, you'd put a W in there. If you were attaching a letter of consent, it would just be O for other. These are the three steps that Eric was talking about earlier today. There are three ways you can get the application to EWA. In CIVO Express, this is where we would assess the application preparation review fee. If you completed the application, but you still want us to verify that you've dotted your T's, crossed, I mean, dotted your I's, crossed your T's, and made sure everything was accurate, EWA would go in and verify this information for you, and they would assess the 195 or the 250, depending on whether or not you were a member or not. CIVO Solo is where You've completed the application. You don't want application preparation review. You don't need us to verify. You know that it's 100% accurate, but you don't want to coordinate it. You want EWA to go ahead and, and do the analysis for you and make recommendation to the FCC. The third one is CIVO Pro. As Eric said, this is where you get to go in and play in our playground. You get to go in and run the analysis yourself. You can go in and look at the results. You can look at the details of the application to see what frequency is best for you and pick it for your customer. So you have some say with regards to what frequencies are going to be recommended for your customer. So now we're ready to go ahead, and if you were a CIVO Pro user, this would be the next screen that you would see. Step one basically says that we're going to run the analysis for all of the industrial business pool frequencies. Step two is optional. If you want, you can go in and look at frequencies. Additional fees may be incurred because you're going to do a single run, whether it's low power, air transportation, whatever you're looking for. So I personally would run industrial business all, and go look at that drop-down and make my choices from there. 
if you choose option two, where it says select, where it's circled, you, would, you must check off the box to say that you want to run a specific band. And there is a drop down where it says select right now, where you would pick LP or whatever pool you wanted to run. Next, you're going to look, it's going to say, okay, I see that you picked all industrial business. This is the page where it's telling me what it's going to run when it's doing the frequency coordination analysis. So I put in a fixed site and associated mobiles. I asked for UHF, and in the include, the two boxes for the fixed site and the mobiles are checked off. So that's all the system is going to run. And if you have a 6.1 control, you'll notice that you don't have the box there because those don't go through frequency coordination because you don't have coordinates to run. Then you're going to hit coordinate. Coordinate and submit for coordination, that's the CVO Pro. That's where you get to run the analysis and you'll get the results back where you can review them and make it, the recommendations. If you don't want to do that, you can just hit submit to EWA at any time through the process and it will go through solo. So the next screen or what it will do here, once the analysis is done, you will notice that we put location one, location two, antenna one, antenna one, and then we have the range of frequencies. In order to look at the coordination results, you must click on the frequency or range that you want to look at the results for. It will come back and it will show you. It will rank the frequency for you. It will break it down and, and put it, whether the frequency passes or fails. The P will be for pass. F will be for fail. The I will be for ignore. Then you have the percentage of overlap. This is from the incumbent licensees to your proposed system. The comment section is very important. As you can see in the very first box, it says Rule 130 IW frequency. So if you were to pick this frequency for your customer, be advised it has to go to the power coordinator for their certification and approval. We'd have to go inter service concurrence and additional fees would be assessed. If you don't want that frequency and you see something that's just as good where it's blank in the comment section, there are no limitations. So EWA could certify this for you or you could pick that one for EWA to certify for you at that point in time and not have to go inter service concurrence. Rank. Yes, and I did say it does rank them and it, you'll see 1, 10, 20 and it will put it low to high. Once, if you clicked on details and you wanted to see the coordination results, it would show you this screen. This, this shows you the frequencies, it shows you the call sign of your incumbent licensees, it gives you the applicant's name, it shows you their station class, it shows you their radio service code, it shows you how far they are away from you. Now, this is blank because there is no contour overlap because this was an adjacent channel. If there was contour overlap, you would see numbers in there. And it would show you what the percent of overlap is from the incumbent to your proposed system. You will also see incumbent and proposed contour overlap. If you see negative, negative in the columns, there is no contour overlap. If you see a positive number, it's showing you that there is overlap. It's showing you what their ERP is, and it's showing you the emission designator, and it's showing you that the frequency passes. As I said earlier, the P is for pass. If the frequency fails, you'll see an F, or if it's wideband and it has a 20K, the commission said that we could ignore those. So you'll see the I, and those were not taken in consideration when the analysis is done. You can print a copy of your application, and it will print out in a true 601 format. So you will be able to see your application as it's going to appear at the FCC. Uh, 
All right, Cecilia, thank you so much. Um, that kind of runs us through a, a very quick but thorough uh, uh, review of the various screens that you'll be looking at if you wanted to go through the entire process. As I mentioned earlier, and Cecilia did too, you're welcome to submit as much data as you have or as little as you have, and EWA can take it from there. Choose the, the, uh, the appropriate box, SIBO Express, if you've done uh, not the entirety, pick SIBO Solo if you've supplied everything and you know your application is complete, uh, or pick SIBO Pro if you'd like to do some further analysis uh, and select your own frequencies. So what's next? So visit the site. Uh, you, as I mentioned earlier, you've probably received your login credential already, or the link. Click that link, reset your password, and you're on, uh, and you're on uh, your way. If, uh, if you haven't received an email from us, uh, go ahead and try that Forgot Password link. We may have already pre-populated your account uh, and use your work email address as opposed to any, any personal email addresses because we've got your work email. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you, you can use this for public safety. You can use it for business industrial. As you saw in the slides earlier, the dashboard will track both the status as it moves through the process, if it's public safety and it's gone through its review process, if it's business industrial and it's all um, going through the, the uh, process of EWA uh, and work that we do, you'll see the status, and uh, once the FCC grants it, you'll see that information as well. You'll still continue to receive the emails that EWA has provided along the way, uh, but if you want to see it all in one place, your dashboard is the place to go. And let us know what you think. Please go ahead and uh, send us an email. There's some contact information that follows in just a minute. Uh, please uh, let us know uh, how you're getting along. Uh, don't hesitate to call us. We would love to talk with you about what you think and what we can do to make CEVO uh, a better experience for you. And to the extent that you've got licensing personnel in your office uh, that did not receive any emails from EWA about this pro product, uh, please forward this to them. Let them know. Uh, we'd like to uh, set up an account for them as well, and um, this information will show you how to get there. Okay, and I have one comment that I'd like to add again. One, you don't have to be logged into SIVO in order to use the tools. Two, remember that if it has a red box, a yellow triangle, you need to be aware those are required fields or additional information is required. One thing that I forgot to tell you is there's a little blue eye on some of the boxes. If you don't know what the question is asking, you can click the eye for information. It will give you a pop-up. It will tell you what this box is asking for. You just click close and you enter your information. So again, red boxes are required fields. Blue eye basically tells you what the commission's looking for for that box and you can answer it. And then the yellow warning triangles are saying additional information is required. But if you don't know it and you don't have it and you want EWA to take over, you can go ahead and submit it through Express and just hand it over to EWA, but be advised you will be assessed a form preparation fee. Okay. Uh, and so wrapping up, we would like to thank you for joining us today. We've got a few questions that have come in through the chat line, so I'll address those, but you can find our address here. Certainly if you have been working with uh, a favorite spectrum advisor or one that has been assigned to your company and your account, feel free to contact them for any questions about SIVO and contact Cecilia if you uh, don't have a Spectrum Advisor. We'll be happy to get one assigned to you so that you have one person that you're dealing with at EWA for all of your particular issues. If you'd like 